afternoon guys <laughs> it's been a long time coming we are in september now but this is my august um tutorial thursday video playing catch up has been said as has been said many times already like i said i'm playing catch up because last month throughout august was our um here in the uk was our summer holiday half term so six six and a half seven week um break from school and filming was extremely difficult with Taylor around and the grandchildren and other things so I'm playing catch up so I'm going to show you how to make this um music paper envelope but I'm going to do it two ways so this video is going to be a two-parter it'll be um spliced together edited together to be one long video so it probably will be long <laughs> bear that in mind but I will show you both ways this one was made was done using material and then I did another one uh, this one sorry was made using material and I used the sewing machine then I decided to do another one using just paper no material just paper and um, glue <laughs> And I got it wrong. Look at this. Complete lack of concentration there because Thoud Man was actually at the time sat next to me at Taylor's PC sorting some stuff out for him. Um, antivirus or something I think it were. And he wasn't even talking to me. We just sat there. I wasn't talking, filming or anything. I, would, I wasn't, even, wasn't even filming. I was just doing like prototype to make sure it worked out okay. And I've completely fully glued that down where i shouldn't have done i should have just glued the bottom and left that as a tuck i glued it down completely and then i cut that at the wrong angle so that one didn't work out to plan but then later on um i think it were a couple of days later actually i actually made another one and got it right so um oh and then about an hour ago i've just made this teeny tiny one so that's going to be like a bonus at the end to show that you don't have to have a giant piece of paper you can do it any size um but yeah so this is the one that everybody has been so eagerly anticipated waiting for and yeah um especially barbara hi barbara i have to say hello to you you are a superstar honestly um one of my subbies barbara noble she's been amazing honestly her excitement revolving around this project is, has been unreal she hasn't pestered she hasn't badgered she's apologized a few times sorry for pestering you're not pest you haven't been pestering at all not one bit it was never taken that way at all um i get i understand you've just been really excited about this project and sort of like have you done it yet when is it coming i did promise and I don't normally break promises, but like I said, one thing after another, then that man ended up in hospital as well. Well, I say ended up in hospital, it was scheduled. We just didn't realise it was going to be then, but anyway. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> I am here eventually. And actually, Barbara, apart from you watching this tutorial and getting all giddy and excited about it, um, when you watch this or when you finish watching this, please contact me below because you are an, you have been an absolute superstar through all this and I love your excitement and everything. And as a thank you for being such a superstar, um, I really, 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 really would like to send you these two as a, pres as a gift. So please do contact me below. I will leave my email address my email address below. Um, if you are on Facebook or any of the other social media sites, you can contact me on the links below. But I will leave my email address down down below as well. So please contact me, and I will get these two in the post to you. Sorry, door went. Um, but anyway, yes, I was saying, um, please do contact me, and I will put these two in the post to you like i said i will show at the end how to make this super dinky little cute thing um basically in the same way just miniature version um but yeah so please do contact me barbara and thank you so much so much honestly i have not taken any offense whatsoever to you asking me on a regular basis has it been done yet or how long do you think it's going to take because i understand I do understand that this was promised a while back and I just never got around to it. But here I am. 
excuse me oh dear me anyway before we start and i'm going to try and remember to do this every tutorial video but please forgive me if i don't because i am a bit scatterbrained um i was just going to say ingredients list <laughs> It's not an ingredients list at all. Supplies list. Is that what I'm the word I'm looking for? My brain's just gone scattered. Um pretty sure it's a supplies list. These are the things you're going to need if you would like to um follow along with this tutorial or do it afterwards. You will need glue. What type of glue you use is entirely up to you, but you will probably need, well, you don't need so much, but glue stick will work fine. And if you are doing the no saw method, um, I would suggest you use some form of a wet glue. So I use art glitter glue, Fabri-Tac would work just as well. The Beacon 3-in-1 would work just as well. I would imagine PVA glue would work okay as well, providing you use it only sparingly. Um, tacky glue, I haven't actually used this one yet, but tacky glue I would imagine, just like I said, any form of wet glue. Or, alternatively, for any scrapbooker's journal, um, not scrapbooker's album makers or whatever, score tape you know this is like on a roller thing um but you yeah like score tape will do so this or double-sided sticky tape would work just as well if like i said you're doing the no saw method but you are still going to need some form of glue wet glue or a very because you only really you only need a really 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 thin layer of glue for that little bit there because you don't glue the full thing down. You only glue a little piece of it down. As for everything else, I, you should be okay, I think. Um, I used Uhu glue for this because I just decoupaged a little piece of napkin there and there on the back. I didn't... I think I used Uhu for all that actually, apart from that. Um, but there and there on the back. Um, but yeah, anyway, so some form of glue. Uh, glue stick, wet glue, or. Um, score tape, double sided sticky tape. Um, actually, I've just put my glue away and I need it. So yeah, you need glue. If you want to do the one with the fabric on, then you need some fabric. This is... Now this... I, I'm not against giving measurements, but I really don't particularly want to be do, too precise with measurements with this because everybody's papers are going to be a different size. But these are just little four-inch pieces of material. Sorry. Just little four-inch pieces of material that I have that are more than enough for the big one that I'm going to make. Um, you need a ruler. You don't necessarily need a ruler, but I'm going to use it as a guide for tearing. I wouldn't particularly say you need ruler for measuring. Um, I already have these made up. Uh, I will rephrase that. They are not mine. That made it sound like I made them up and I don't. I already have packets of these that I bought from our local haberdashery shop a couple of years ago that are already made up. I've just scouted one out that ties in with the project I'm using. If you are doing the no saw method, um, then I have just used a little paper pack. Um, why do I never have anything to hand when I need it? Honestly, everything's here behind me, but I can't see it straight off. Um, Gracious, where are you? There they are. I will show you guys. They are these. I've just 
taken them out of these little dinky paper packs um, and they are 10 by 10 centimetres so four they're the same four by four inches same size as the um, material so that worked out well um, and like I said this is for the no saw version you need two coordinating colours um, you could use the same ones but I've used two coordinating colours um, <laughs> We'll save that paper for last and then you need some um, that papers just to do the tiny one with this paper is again I don't really want to give measurements but by the time I've finished um, tearing it down to size because we're going to lose these side pieces I'm going to go along these edges here it will be approximately 11 and three quarters so yeah but like I said it doesn't matter because you can do the same with this tiny piece of paper you just end up with a smaller envelope so I don't want to get too fixated on what size papers you should be using because it doesn't matter you know you use whatever size you want to use but I am going to use these giant sized ones for the time being and then all you need to do is pick out which side of your paper you would like to use and obviously that will depend on how you want your pattern bearing in mind let's go off this first one bearing in mind most of it's going to be covered up and depending which way you do it it's going to be sideways or maybe possibly upside down in this instance it's going to be sideways um, but yeah, so do you want the fussy bit on there? This one I left plain on the back. The no sew version, I decorated the back. So like I said, I've collaged, not collaged, decoupaged, napkin there in the corners, them two corners and then them two corners. And then I've put a giant label that was fussy cut from a piece of scrap card, um, card scrapbooking card, sorry, 12 by 12 scrapbooking card. It was fussy cut from a piece of that. I have put that on that side just to jazz it up this one I left plain <laughs> that one I got wrong so I didn't bother um, this tiny one here on the back of there I have used a label and a butterfly so it's entirely up to you it depends which way you want to focus on being the front and the back to me this this is my focal point so this to me is the front of an front of my envelope but how fussy do you want your pattern you see so on this one it wasn't too fussy um, that one I did the same this one it's smaller and closer together so it is quite fussy so do you want that side where there's a lot of music notes that side's even about the same actually or you could do this that side or that side where there's not as much on it what I do is I pay no attention to that whatsoever and what I do is I look at the lines obviously you've got your notes I ignore the notes and everything else and I look at these lines here in between because I am using them as a guide I will not measure all I am going to do is get rid of this white space around it and then I'm going to use those lines as a guide to fold up and I'm going to line this up with that and then line this up with that on the other side or thereabouts so let's get on with it and I think I'm going to use doesn't really matter I think I'm going to use this side okay so we just line the edges up, the ruler with the edge of this pattern and tear. You don't have to tear, you can cut. If you have a trimmer, a score, um, paper trimmer, you can by all means trim. I like the rough edge. Doesn't have to be a metal ruler either. It can be anything. 
You could even, if you really wanted to, use a tear ruler if you have one. Like I say, you can use a paper trimmer, you can use scissors and cut, you could use a craft knife and cut. It depends how you want your finished look. Now I'm not going to bother about these bumpy bits, I'm going to get rid of them. And again, I'm not bothered about the music notes, I'm just using the lines. Do not throw your scraps away, keep them. We are going, uh, well, actually, we're not going to do in this um, tutorial. Uh, but what I did in a different one, oh, it was this one. Sorry, I'm getting myself mixed up with the antique paper redesign team project for last. No, for this month, not last month. Um, and what I did were very similar principle except to use the design paper instead of music paper and these scraps that were left over I made a paper ruffle with although you could do that for this bit for this paper ruffle fastening if you would des if you so desire but most people won't throw the scraps away anyway but I certainly won't be doing and I will put them in here <laughs> I have a bag that is for specifically nothing but music paper, off music paper scraps, 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 off cuts, what have you. Also because I love the paper. Excuse me, this is, oh my goodness, sorry. This is a vintage paper, so it feels amazing. Okay. So we are now pretty much just short of an A4 sheet of paper. It is approximately 11 and a half inch by seven and three quarters inch, which is approximately 19 and a half centimeters by 29 and a half centimeters but again like I said do not get hung up on sizes because it will all depend on the size of your music paper and it doesn't matter because there's no measuring involved in this I mean you could turn that way and use not the glass mat use your board underneath as a guide but I'm not going to because I'm using these lines going this way not the lines going that way turn it and use these as a guide now what i'm going to do and i work sideways anyway i'm going to guess approximately or work out i work <laughs> i work very strange guys i work sideways so you know i don't fold upwards like that i i work better sideways um but yes yeah, so obviously However high up you go depends on how deep you want your pocket. So do you want a short pocket with a big flap? Or do you want a big pocket with a short flap? And what I tend to do is... Work off that. So I am going to go to that line there. Ignoring that and use this line here. So them lines there use that as a guide and fold you don't really need a bone folder or anything but you could use one if you have one and then I always like to leave probably about a thumbs not even a thumbs width just like that but this is where these lines now on this side come in useful because that should now tally up with that or line up with that and leave yes just mark it gently that is a very good space to leave so now I will line this flap up with that line and fold and there you have your basic envelope obviously not glued or anything yet now this one, I am going to do the um, I'm going to do the no saw 
version first. Um, yeah, I will do the no sewing version first and then I will do the sewing later and probably knock the sound off. It depends if I can get this done before Taylor comes home. Um, but yes, so what you need to do now then is use your wet glue to glue it shut. And all you do is open it back up and glue down this edge. As close to the edge as you can. Like that. Oh, got some seepage there. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> There we go. Okay, and then you've got your flap. Now, as I did on the... What I was trying to do on the original no sewing one was make an envelope shape, basically. Um, and I cut the wrong side. I cut that the wrong way. Um, but instead, to make things a lot easier... I'm just got looking for it and it's here. I'm just going to use my corner rounder. Um, you could leave it flat. You could take a little bit off the sides to taper it in like that, more envelope shaped. But I like the rounded look. So I'm going to use my corner rounder, the 10 millimeter one. Doesn't matter what you use. Use what you've got, guys. You do not have to do exactly the same as me. You use what you have already. So, there you go. I think it just finishes it off nicely. So, there is your basic envelope. Okay. Sorted. Yeah. Right. Now, we come to decorate. And that's where all this comes in handy. Right. So, what I did was, I took, in the first one, material. In this one, I took this little piece and lined it up. And then, which way around have I got it? All right, so it's that way up. <laughs> Don't think it matters. But, yep, we'll put it that way up. Sorry, guys. And again, using the lines, or in this case, the music notes as lines, just pretty much centralise it. But then, well, hang on a minute. If I centralise it up there, that's okay. But then if I bring it down just a, just a fraction, I can line it up there and there. You know, so this will all depend on your own music paper. Or just pretty much wherever you want it but I try to centralize it a little bit and then what you then want to do is with your envelope closed sorry you're going to need a pencil I forgot that is and this is where I use the lines again you're going yep the edge of your envelope is here. Hang on, I'm going to zoom you in. Sorry. Right, I'm zoomed you in. Okay, so your edge of your envelope is here. We are going to cut this piece of paper here, approximately here, in line with that there. This will then scoot under I hope you're following this <laughs> um, yeah so actually I think I did measure this I'd forgotten about this bit being a little bit tricky right so basically ignore everything I just say and come in an inch come down an inch so this little piece here you want this little piece here you want to cut an inch off the top of it 
so there was a bit of measuring involved sorry i forgot about that let's look at habits even though my cutters my um chopping boards over there cutting paper cutter trimmer um i have a small one here so i will use that and let's go this way i will cut one inch off the top i apologize if my head's in the way i don't think it is but i apologize if it is so line up with the one inch mark okay i can zoom you back out now so line up at the one inch mark and cut okay and there and then pop that in there actually i think that were more than one inch yes it was it was one and a half right well never mind we're creating a whole new envelope <laughs> right so that staying in line with the top one like we did before and this one staying in line with the bottom one like we did before glue it down they do not meet up they don't match up but it'll look right when it's done this is where you can use your, your glue stick when you're doing the no so um, I really, really hope this video is making sense because I understand I don't think I am making much sense. I think I'm being very vague today. This is what happens. I can stand and I, I stand or sit. I tend to stand when I'm crafting. I can stand and I can make these things no problem. No problems at all. But as soon as I flick, record button and i have to actually tell you instructions on what to do my brain immediately goes mm -mm, no 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 can't do that <laughs> don't want to do it and then i get flustered and i completely forget what i'm doing and i have just glued that on upside down so how about that for being genius okay pay attention to which way you're gluing it on <laughs> oh dear me oh barbara i bet you're well excited now aren't you please don't make my mistakes barbara <sighs> i hope this was worth the wait <laughs> dear you dear me that's better right although i do think i'm gonna have to just stick some more glue on there because <clears throat> yeah we'll just pretend that bit didn't happen i'm not going to edit it out because you know everybody makes mistakes and at the end of the day if you don't watch me make mistakes then you're never going to learn from my mistakes are you not everybody's perfect so there we go and then like i said i am um, going to where did i even say i was going to line that up that one was it that one no this one okay this one look at the right one so now we will glue this on again if you were sewing you would do the same thing just sew it instead of gluing it and make sure you sew it in the right position the right way up i mean orientation that's the word so just to double check we are using that as a guide and we are on the second lining this is where the lines really do come in useful there we go and yes that fold closes under the flap but that's what you want Okay. It's a bit glowy, is that? So that's that bit done. 
Okay, guys. It's vaguely resembling this now. Excuse me. Vaguely. <laughs> this next bit's quite simple. You just need a tag. It can be any tag. You know, you can make your own. It doesn't have to be an embellished one like this. You can make your own. It needs to be fairly sturdy. So make sure it's on cardstock or you've layered it a few times. Like if you, you could use book pages, but do glue a couple together. Um, like I said, these I already have. And I have a lot of them. Um, I will show you. They are handmade tags, but not by me. I bought them from our local haberdashery shop or oh, ages ago, 69p a packet, they were ages ago. Um, and there's all sorts of themes in them and what have you. Seaside theme, there's a memories themed kit, there's all sorts. Um, oh, them are shop bought tags, I don't know why they're in there. This one actually came out of this batch, which is like a, a heart stroke Valentine's love theme kit kind of thing. Um, yeah, they're awesome. Oh, there you go, see, come out of like that, that sort of kit. Um, yeah, and I only just recently found them again, actually. Um, I'd completely forgotten about them, so I was really pleased, really shocked when I found them. But you could make your own, by all means, you could make your own, they don't have to be that size. Basically, all you need now is a closure because this is going to act as your envelope flap closure. So it doesn't have to be that big. That's a little too big, but you could use any size tag. Just need not to have any to hand. Uh, well, actually, I'm saying about you don't even need a tag. This tiny one, I didn't use a tag. Well, I just used a tiny embellishment. I just glued it onto some cardstock. But I used one of Tracy's tiny embellishments from her kit. So, like I said, you just need something as a clo to use as a closure. But with it being a tag and with these already having the grommets in, eyelets, grommets, that is really useful because then all you need, sorry, <laughs> then all you need, which I'd also forgotten about, is a brad. Yeah, so you need one of them too. I will add these down below in the description box the supplies list should I say I'll add below in the description box so we're going to need a brad and I love these these are these are really useful because they're all different colors they're really cute let's have a look yeah, I think that's a bit too close in color it doesn't stand out enough I don't want a red one what about this dark pink one I quite like that one, but let's have a look at the purple. No, not that one, not purple, hot pink, that's it. Well, it is purple, it's like a hot pinky purple colour. Oh gosh, I'm spoiled for choice. Which one, guys? Which one? I think this one. What do you think? So there's that one. Or... Oh, I'm going for that one. I'm sorry if you were screaming the other one, but I'm um, yeah, more drawn to that one. So, that's what, that's what we're going for. Put that back in there. But yes, yeah, so you just need a little brad. And then you need to figure out where you want it for a start. So again, this is where the measuring comes in useful because you can use these little music notes as a guide. 
uh, which I will, I think I will put it there. And then you need, you don't even really need a pencil, just use the brad there and then just poke it through. That's all you need to do, just poke it through. Mind your fingers, but then just poke it through and then, obviously, open it up. Again, mind your fingers, they can be sharp. And there you have it. There you have your little closure. However, we need to anchor it because otherwise, what, what's it going to close? It, it's not doing nothing. It looks fancy, but it, it's pretty useless. What's, why, what's it doing? So, this is where these come in useful. And... They should be half that size as well. You really only need these to be around, that's three quarters of an inch, but an inch will do. Oops, half an inch, even half an inch would do. Um, I have little strips left because I've used, these were, these, this paper was this. It was the same size as this and I've cut it in strips because obviously I used it there and I used it on the other one that I got wrong. Um, but yes, yeah, so just fold it and I'm going to tear it. I'm not going to do anything majorly technological. And then all I'm going to do is just use this one strip and I'm going to fold. So that's one fold, leave a gap two folds and actually I'm not going to do it as big I did this last time and I forgot so a small fold small fold small fold and a small fold <laughs> yeah you don't want to fully concertina it but you do want a little fold to make a ruffle because there you go now that's going to be Yep, it does all, honestly, it won't fold how I want it to now. Right, so that one I only did four folds, so there's one, two, right, I've done four big folds, that's why, okay, three, four. Oh, come on. Right, sorry guys, I'm going to do this again and I'm going to do it in front of you so you know. Right, so... Fold one and try and keep it as straight as you can actually. So one, two, <laughs> it's not that easy when you're doing it by hand. Three, four. Okay, not perfect, but there's four little folds there. That's better. I'm filming <laughs> and then glue yeah I know and glue and glue that side and then flip over and glue there glue there glue there okay and there you have it Let's give it a mush smush oh, it's not straight honestly which way mm, don't think it matters and then glue that there but on the bottom part so just here along the bottom tiny little piece of glue there because you need to be able to tuck under it and then line it up and glue and then untuck that very quickly before you glue that to it
There we go. That's why I like using the art glitter glue. It dries fast. It doesn't really matter if you're patient enough, but it dries fast, so I really like that. And then you don't need to pull that back, but it helps until it's glued, until it's dried. And then you use that as your little anchor to keep the flap shut. Like that. See? Then on this one, I used four stamp, my four stitching stamp, just to go around the edges to give it that sewn look, which is cool. Oh, and then here on the inside, I added a Tracy label, that's a Tracy Fox label is that, and I just added that label there basically just to hide the inside of the brad because it can be a little bit sharp. Um, so I'll do that later. But yeah, so there you have the no saw version of an envelope and then of course you just, if you so desire, decorate the other side with whatever you want. I'm not going to do that. Um, but there you go. So that's it. And of course with the brad attaching to that it gives it the leverage to swing. So, and then of course, like I said, you just anchor it there, and that's that. So it's fairly straightforward, but as per usual, my instructions are far from it. <laughs> and I will be back again later with the video on how to do it using the sewing machine. So I'll see you later, guys. Bye.